Right, good evening everybody. So welcome to this month's Cabinet meeting. Uh, could I just confirm that Councillors Cawthorn and Councillors O'Brien are on the line? Could you indicate, please? Uh, uh, indeed, uh, Leader, I am on the line. Councillor O'Brien? Thank you, I'm here as well. Thank you very much. In which case, let's move on to the agenda. Apologies for absence. Chairman, all members are present. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest in matters before us this evening? If not, can we approve the minutes of the last Cabinet meeting shown on pages 1 to 14? Is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. And to confirm that the items of business mark part 1 will be considered in public, and the items of business mark part 2 in private. The public reports are numbers 5 to 9, and the Cabinet reports in private are... Cabinet report number 10. So, the first report this evening, the Older People's Plan update. Uh, I will move the recommendation, and the recommendation is that the Cabinet notes the success to date and continue progress to deliver the Older People's Action Plan during the first half of 2021 uh, to improve the quality of life, health and well-being of older people in Hillingdon. Now, this is one of the... Um, really good things that we do in Hillingdon, supporting our older people to live independently, to continue active lives and make a positive contribution to local communities and feel safer in their own homes. The pandemic has obviously curtailed a number of activities, but the services have risen to the challenges and there have been a number of uh, achievements during the first half of this year. Now, the things that we no in Hillingdon, three burglar alarms um, in the period January to the end of September 2020, 130 alarms were installed in phase 12, that leaves 368 of the current phase available for installation and funding for phase 13, the next phase for a further 1,000 alarms has already been approved so that is there for the foreseeable future. We also now offer um, 12 months after the initial installation of free service and in the period to the end of September 278 services were carried out uh, leaving another 586 to be carried out um, in the current phase and Cabinet will note that since we began this scheme in 2008 the Council has now installed 10,926 alarms which is a significant number. On preventative care the telecare lines uh, service that supports residents to live safely and independently in their own homes. This uses a range of equipment, sensors and detectors, connected back to a control centre to provide assistance to older people who need it 24-7. As of 30 September, Hingdon had 6,642 residents in receipt of telecare, of whom 5,612 were aged over 75 years and thus received this service free charge. Uh, in the period under review, April to 30th September, we installed 261 um, over 65 telecare uh, line services. Dementia is something that we have looked at um, for many years now, and this has been particularly uh, difficult in the COVID situation, but we have managed to um, have virtual coffee mornings, afternoon tea and sing-along sessions uh, using Zoom, 8 to 12 uh, participants, all sorts of uh, things, football Fridays, um, it, it, and taking out resource packs, they call them a buddy pack, which are sent out weekly to residents living with dementia. Um, they have quizzes, puzzles, songs, poems, reminiscent stories, and chair-based exercises. The support to older people in the community, we um, help Age UK, we provide financial support um, to them to provide a range of services for older people and the Good Neighbours and Befriending Service targeting isolated and lonely people 
has come to the fore even more in the pandemic. Um, they come up with a new, they rebranded it Call, Chat and Care as a part of their friending service and that's been very well received. Financial support for older people, we discovered many years ago that a number of older people don't claim the benefits that they're entitled to, sometimes it's pride, sometimes it's lack of knowledge and we use Age UK to help us do that. We find it's better that it's done by Age UK more at social events than for us to have a council officer contacting them. They think it's more formal and they don't react to it. But in the first two quarters of 2020, an additional £417,000 of the benefits was um, found to, to, to older residents who were entitled to them. Smaller things like the heat alone scheme, as we, we come to the winter period now, the if anybody over age 65 in this borough, if their central heating were to break down, um, they can claim free of charge heaters which we would take out to them. Um, we always um, offer to pay a small one-off grant to ensure that people are not discouraged from using them because of the electricity costs. Um, and that scheme's commenced, as it always does, in late October as the temperatures begin to drop. Um, so we remain to see how the winter goes there. The Brown Badge Old Persons Parking Scheme. Um, this continues to be um, popular. In the six months to October, a total of 618 new brown badges were issued. And there are currently 13,274 active brown badge users in the borough. So Help at Home, which is another Age UK sponsored thing that supports clients through the lockdown. And in the first two quarters they made 6,630 visits, providing 9,372 hours of support. Sorry to give you so many figures, but I think it's, it's indicative of um, the problem that we always face. Um, but even more so in this pandemic time, the, the, the supporting vulnerable people is even more important. And having this already set up was amazing because it's not, not as though we're rushing around trying to do it. It's been there for years. We just had to adapt it to the pandemic situation. I don't believe there is another council in the country that provides a level and range of support for older residents that we do in Hillingham. Uh, council and it's something that we should be proud of. So with that, are there any comments or can I move the recommendation? Is that agreed? Thank you. Thank you everybody. Agenda item six is proposed lease of Rysip Golf Course to High Speed 2, HS2 Limited, and a proposed agreement for lease of part of Rysip Golf Course for the site of a new secondary free school. Councillor Bianco. Uh, thank you, Leader. Uh, well, the uh, agenda item is as stated in the title, um, but there is background that I think it would be worth mentioning um, before um, agreeing or otherwise recommendations. Um, for some time now, uh, the DFE, or perhaps I should say the funding agency for schools, has been looking for sites uh, in the borough for uh, secondary schools. Originally, from 2016, they were looking for two sites, and more, reg more recently, in 2018, they reduced that to one site uh, in the north. Now, uh, it should be understood that the calculations that are made in order to justify whether a new school or additional classrooms or whatever it might be is needed uh, are, are calculations undertaken by the DfE and not by this council. Um, and all councils across the country rely on those figures to make uh, the necessary judgments on whether new schools are needed. Um, we uh, remain concerned at this point that, uh, well, uh, on the question of whether indeed this new school is needed, um, uh, currently uh, there are uh, significant vacancies in the primary schools in the area, which would seem to imply at least that um, may, maybe there's sufficient capacity in the secondary school network in that part of the borough uh, already. Um, so it's important to separate perhaps the two parts of this and understand what it is we're doing here. Uh, the first part 
uh, of the, this agenda item is to grant a lease of the whole of the golf course to HS2. The new HS2 track runs through part of the golf course and certainly across it, and uh, they have already taken occupation of this site, and so granting them a lease is simply regularising that arrangement. Uh, it's obviously something we're not keen on, but we've been <laughs> put in the position of having to um, do so. The second part is in respect of the school, and it is an agreement for lease. So it's a step back from granting a lease. It's, it's, it's the preliminary. And I think what I want to emphasise is we must grant the agreement for lease, it is the only site that planning officers and others have identified in the borough, in that part of the borough, that could conceivably take a school and would be allowable in planning terms. And if you like, it will um, ring fence this site for that use until such time as a definitive decision can be made as to whether that school is needed uh, or not. Uh, and clearly if the answer is it, that it is, then there is the site for it, and if the answer is that there's not, then we can release this site back for other uses. Um, the remainder of the uh, golf course site that is being taken over by High Speed 2 will eventually uh, return uh, as a nine-hole golf course in all likelihood. Um, but I think the other point to be made, uh, just going back to the school bit, is that before any decision, final decision on are we going to build a school here or not, is made, it will come back to this cabinet. So this is merely reserving the site for potential use as a school. Um, and I think that's uh, the point I want to make. There are four recommendations at the top of page 38, and on the basis of what I've said, I move them. Are those recommendations agreed? Thank you. Gender item seven. Hillingdon's elected home education policy. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, everybody, and uh, welcome from me from the leafy suburbs of Ryslip this evening. So thank you for allowing me to be um, in your meeting, albeit by voice only tonight. Um, so thank you, Lee. I'm pleased to move agenda item seven, the Hillingdon's elected home education policy. The draft policy contained within this paper is a review of the current 2012 policy. Coming full circle for me, as I was a member of the Education Policy Overview Committee, who with colleagues conducted the review back in 2012. The policy has been reviewed recently by officers and reflects a more balanced approach to both the Council's responsibility to safeguarding and the rights of the parents. The 2020 draft has also taken into consideration a number of other ways to improve information and communication between the council and the parents who choose this pathway and the policy has a clear process diagram set out uh, now in Appendix B on page 78 or policy page 22 within the documents in front of you. In addition, the revised policy has been updated to reflect the latest Department for Education's guidance. For background, elective home education is a term used to describe the parents' right to provide education for their children at home or elsewhere, rather than using a full-time educational setting. This year, due to the current coronavirus pandemic, all local authorities are experiencing a significant increase in families choosing to electively home educate their children. Hillingdon is no exception, with an increase of in requests for pupils to be removed from school role. The latest data is listed on page 53 of the um, uh, point six of the report by the council has been notified of 335 pupils, and equating to a 48% increase compared to the same time last year. The policy will help to provide continued support for those families and hopefully foster and encourage relationships with parents and that home educate to work with the council. The Residence Education and Environmental Services Policy Overview Committee will participate in the consultation and report its findings back to Cabinet in February 2021. So the Cabinet this evening is asked to consider recommendations on page 52 of the Cabinet report. Um, Firstly, that it notes the findings from the review by officers. Uh, 
secondly considers the proposals for changes made to the policy and authorises officers to undertake a full consult consultation, a six-week consultation, and finally agrees to receive a further report at its February 2021 Cabinet meeting. Therefore, I move this report. Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Are there any comments? If not, are those recommendations agreed? Thank you. Agenda item Thank eight. you. Thank you. Uh, Council Budget Monitoring 2021 Revenue and Capital Month 6. Budget Monitoring, Councillor Bianco. Thank you, Leader. Uh, it is as the agenda item title says, uh, Month 6 is September. And the good news here is that the net underspend continues to grow. It currently sits at 2.558 million, and that is an improvement of just short of a million on the Month 5. Uh, provision and unallocated reserves are therefore projected to total nearly 30 and a half million uh, pounds at the end of March. Um, separately, um, COVID pressures net of government grants are currently projected at 3.8 million, uh, and this is being funded by a, an earmarked reserve of just over 9 million. Uh, clearly, uh, whilst it's uh, not clear what is going to happen in due course, currently the position is well covered. Um, I know that, Leader, you're going to talk in detail about a number of things. It's worth, worth however, touching on capital. And if one turns to uh, paragraph 14 on page 82, you will see that the current underspend as at month 6, September, is 52.79 million. Um, and, and that is a significant uh, amount uh, set against the overall budget, but mainly this is due to rephasing uh, expenditure into future years. Uh, some schemes temporarily put on hold and others being re-evaluated. Um, however, the position uh, is that um, major capital programme is continuing and uh, we will deliver the projects that we have said, albeit that COVID has got in the way and it may take a little longer. Uh, on that basis, uh, Leader, I move the seven recommendations at the bottom of page 79 and the top of page 80 and leave it to you. Thank you, Councillor Bianco. Um, a, a very good position uh, of month six. Um, as you alluded to, the, um, the COVID pressures that we have here, um, 3.8 million, were determined and calculated before the current lockdown of an additional four weeks, which will have a, an effect on that figure, although there is additional income um, coming from the government. But the good news is, at September, we have 3.8 COVID pressures, which we have covered from our earmark reserves, but 2.5 million more imbalances than we thought we were going to have. So it's quite possible that we can um, cover the COVID costs in year if we can continue to add to our balances in year. Looking at the recommendations, recommendation one, to note the budget position at September 2020, outlined in Table 1, that's on page 84, and it, it concludes that we will end with balances of 30.463, um, as it states in the opening um, purpose of the report. Note the Treasury Management Update, uh, at Appendix E, page 127, um, and as I always um, point out, always look to see there were no breaches of prudential indicators and, or non-compliance for Treasury management policy and practices. Number three, recommendation three, continue the delegated authority to myself and the Chief Executive to approve any consultancy and agency assignments that run to more than £50,000. They are shown on pages 128 to 130. Um, approve some, Recommendations four and five are approving rephasing of budgets, capital programme budgets, into next year. Um, there is an element of it due to COVID, but at this time of the year, um, we are looking to prepare the first draft budget for next year in December. So we need to agree, as part of that budget setting exercise, what we anticipate we're going to carry forward um, so we can um, have a capital programme for next year. That's the purpose of that. Recommendation six, to approve the environment of £676,000 from the general capital contingency budget to the Uxbridge Mortuary Extension Project. Now, this was something that we were 
doing. This had nothing to do with COVID. We were going to do this uh, before the pandemic um, you know, came upon us. But having received and evaluated the tender bids for the extension, we need to increase the budget by 676,000 um, due to the increase in scope identified during the design and specialist mechanical and electrical services that they need. Um, I've been down there myself on a couple of occasions to look at it and um, look at what they were thinking of doing and it, it will be you know, a state of the art mortuary if that's um, something that um, we don't really want to think about but it's a practical thing we have to do. Um, and this is, as I say, not COVID related. This is, you know, looking past COVID, looking to the future. And recommendation seven, um, a small grant award of 9,980 from London Sport in respect of tackling inequalities, the COVID-19 fund. This is to provide cycle training for vulnerable and at-risk groups in Hayes area. So they are the formal recommendations, but if I can just add that this financial position is the envy of many local authorities. I talk regularly, particularly to London leaders, and we have numerous councils that have 10 million or even less in their balances at this time. That's not a good position, even in a non-COVID situation. Um, so although COVID-19 has brought challenging times, in Hillingdon, we are well placed to manage these challenges and we will do so going forward. Are there any comments, Marks? If not, are the recommendations agreed? agreed. Thank you. Agenda item nine is Cabinet delegations to the Chief Deputy Chief Executive and Corporate Director of Residence Services. Um, with the upcoming retirement of the Deputy uh, Chief Executive, who happens to be sitting uh, in the room with us tonight, we need to organise the orderly transfer of the delegated authorities that we've um, been given at numerous cabinet meetings over the years um, within the Council's new top tier management structure. There are two elements to this. The first is to express our appreciation to Jean Palmer for her outstanding service to this borough um, and secondly from the date she leaves on in January next year to permit the transfer of all the delegations that have been granted to her that are still live um, in conjunction with the leader of cabinet members that we've done over the years to either the chief executive or the relevant service director. Um, many of these will be service areas and will go to environment, education and community services, building services, infrastructure and business improvement, or corporate services and resources. Um, I think throughout her career, as it says in this report, Jean has continuously strived for improvements in so many areas and achieved success through cross-cutting projects, through um, not having this silo approach uh, departmentalising things and looking back over the years um, working with the various cabinet members she was part of the team that was responsible for rebuilding or refurbishing all of our libraries that was the only project of its kind in the country at the time uh, when other councils were closing libraries or we were rebuilding or refurbishing them all 150 million pound schools expansion program um, again, the largest of its kind in London when we were doing it. Two new sports centres, including the first 50 metre swimming pool to be built in London for more than 40 years. And leading on the Business Improvement Development Programme, which over the years has played such an integral part in our budget setting and our sound financial management. Uh, I was pleased that in 2015, as I know we all were, that Jean was um, rewarded with an OBE for outstanding public <coughs> service and as I've said at the recent council meeting in due course um, she will be granted freedom of the borough as a, as a mark of um, our thanks and our respect so two things a vote of thanks to Jean and Jean on behalf of the cabinet the council and indeed our residents thank you for your service 
over the years. It really is much appreciated. And we will now move forward and look at all these delegations, which I know you're going to provide a list of to me in due course, and to decide which director um, uh, draws a short straw and has to pick up your work over when you've gone. <laughs> uh, are there any comments? Councillor Mills. Thank you, Leader. Um, I'd just like to um, assure on behalf of all uh, Cabinet members that join um, with you in terms of those uh, compliments to, uh, to Jean Palmer, who has been a great servant, not just to Hillenden, but to local government. And her attention to detail has also been one of her great strengths, um, as well as this ability to work across different departments. And I always remember, and I can't remember the exact location because we have done so many, as you indicated, Leader, I think it was one of our libraries, we were having an opening, and I think you and the then mayor were due any moment, and to Jean's horror, she suddenly noticed that the carpet had quite a lot of dirt on it, that the cleaners had managed to, to miss it. Well, rather than look to find a, a solution, she ran away, came back with her own broom and brush, and, um, and swept it up, and you didn't know anything about it. And, and I just thought that was, that was just another example of, of her uh, personal desire to make sure that the projects weren't just delivered, but were delivered with a style that was worthy of Hillingdon. So um, many congratulations, and um, do enjoy your retirement when it comes, if we actually let you go. Councillor <laughs> Banco. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, this could turn into a long uh, series of speeches here, but I'd just like to add my own thanks, um, in particular for putting up with me for uh, as many years as you have uh, with... with, with m periodic, or let's call them monthly briefings, uh, where you've invariably provided coffee and tea, well Paula has anyway, uh, coffee and tea, and, and, uh, and, and uh, if when we had the morning meetings, um, uh, croissants as well. Um, so um, in, fa in fact, croissants and biscuits, I hasten to add, but um, yeah, it's always got those. So um, I can only thank you for putting up with me um, and for giving such good guidance, and uh, I share with my colleagues uh, our admiration for your uh, work ethic too um, uh, often in here before anybody else um, and often still here after everybody else has gone um, it, it will I'm sure be an exciting new departure for you to have a life of your own um, but if you get lost uh, I'm sure we can find a place for you back here if, uh, uh, if, if needs must so Jean I do wish you I'm, I'm sure we'll sp speak to you again before but publicly I do wish you every happiness and many years of happy retirement Councillor Palmer. Yes, Jean, I haven't had the pleasure of working with you long as a Cabinet member, but what I have enjoyed is seeing the emails that I get, that invariably you get mine and I get yours. And uh, when people ask me, I say, no, I'm the one without the OBE. <laughs> so I'd just like to say it's been an absolute pleasure with working with you and thank you so much for all you did over this first period of covid with the organising the food and, and marshalling the, I'm going to say, troops to deliver food to our residents. Um, you are going to be missed, and uh, your work ethic is something that uh, I think few of us could aspire to. So thank you for all you've done, and, and it's been a pleasure working with you for a few months at least. Councillor Burrows. Thank um, you, Leader. Um, yeah, Jean, I, I'd just like to say thank you personally for me as well. Um, the Cabinet process had been running some no. time when I joined the Cabinet and took over from Mike Hayward, um, but you helped guide me through some of these sticky patches of planning, transportation, um, and also have managed, when I've come to you with slight issues, to make those issues disappear extremely quickly and get officers to go the right direction um, in such a way that the officers didn't realise you had actually done it. Um, however, I am disappointed I didn't get croissants, but I did get the chocolate biscuit, so I'm OK. The Marks and Spencer's chocolate biscuit. But um, I personally want to say thank you to you. Um, it's been a pleasure knowing you and working with you over these many years, um, and you've been a great support to me as Cabinet Member. And I wish you many happy years in retirement. Um, and like my other Cabinet um, colleagues, if you ever do want to venture back this way, I'm sure we will be able to find you an office and a seat again. So thank you. Councillor Lewis. Indeed. Uh, le leader, if I may, uh, I just wanted to uh, add um, 
from my own perspective, uh, uh, my, my thanks and my very best wishes to Jean. Uh, quite apart from sharing a birthday with me, uh, she and I go back uh, a good number of years, uh, covering a number of different areas of cabinet responsibility. One thing has been uh, common throughout, and that has been her uh, a razor-like focus, a very sharp focus on residents. Uh, she really has embodied that in every way, in every sense, uh, and her attention to detail is really quite remarkable, always available uh, at all hours of the day, almost, it seems, and uh, I really can't thank her enough. So I will join my Cabinet colleagues in thanking her. Sorry I can't be there this evening, but again, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to say goodbye properly uh, uh, nearer the time. So thank you. Councillor Lewis. I, I do apologise, Jean, for having my back to you. I'm the only, I'm the only one that sits this way. Anyway. Um, pretty much everything that's been said that I wanted to say. But, uh, but I, do, I would like to add that the phenomenal success that the leader and, the, and this administration has achieved over the last 20 years is in a large part due to Jean actually completely understanding uh, what Sir Ray and the Cabinet wanted to achieve. Um, it's all well and good having the right policies, but it's making sure that they're implemented, understood and implemented in a timely manner. Margaret Thatcher always said everyone should have a, a, a woolly uh, as, a, as, a, as a deputy. And to paraphrase her, I think we uh, as an administration have been really lucky to have found our genie to carry out the magic. So, Jean, I wish you... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Jean, can I wish you a very, very happy, healthy, and long retirement? Thank you. Okay. Can I take it then that those recommendations are agreed? <laughs> Thank you. Agenda item 10. Sorry? Oh, basically, yes, we're in part two now. I do apologise. We need to pause. <laughs>